I thought I would share with you uh, more detail on how I make these hole punched papers um, for collage and printing with on the jelly plate. Um, they have a really interesting lacy look to them that I like and at the same time kind of technological I guess like um, player piano uh, rolls or uh, the punch cards they used to use in, in computers. So it has like this interesting feel to it. And then the other aspect that I like, I'll show you uh, where I use them, is this, um, you know, it kind of obscures what's behind it, but you can also see it poking through. Um, this is from a book, a uh, Japanese book, uh, in small format. It has a really great paper to it but I have no idea what it says, so I'm a little cautious about putting it um, in a book. I usually try and like turn it upside down and obscure it because I really do not know what it says. Um, this is from a slightly thicker paper uh, that was in a fly fishing manual. Um, I used to do a fair amount of fly fishing, and so it has meaning to me on that aspect, but you can see how You've got your design elements of the circles. Um, you've got stuff peeking through from the background. You've got this text that has meaning perhaps to you. And, um, you know, this strip as well that is a design element. And so <clears throat> I, I like using these in my collage work and I'm gonna teach you how to do that. So the first thing is picking your paper. Um, I picked up this book at the secondhand bookstore that I like to frequent. The books from, I would say like the 40s, 50s, that are like science and math textbooks seem to be pretty good for this. They have this kind of really smooth, thin paper that folds really well. Um, and then you've also got the interest of, you know, math equations or science equations, you know, someone took notes in their book. So um, yeah, they're pretty interesting to use in collage. <clears throat> so I tore out a few pages. And what I do, sometimes I trim the edges, I might have to on this one because it's a little bulky, but um, I just fold it into fourths. Usually that's the right amount of paper to put in a hole punch, at least of this type of paper, it's it's pretty thin. If you have thicker paper, you'll have to see how how it works for you. And I try to be pretty precise with my folds, and then I'll show you. I have this big bin of um, hole punches that I have acquired through the years. I, as a mama of a child in the early 2000s, of course, I was doing a lot of scrapbooking. And so I think I got these mostly for scrapbooking. Didn't use them a whole lot. And then finally discovered this little trick that I like to use in my collage. Um, this is one of my favorite ones. It's for hole re or uh, yeah reinforcing um, binder paper or hole punched holes, and you end up with um, not just the the circle, but also a little collage element in itself. Um, we'll see if this works. It's kind of jammed up with some paper right now. I might need to clear it, but. I've got all different kinds. This is a, you can see on the side here, it makes a, a long uh, rectangle. I've got circles of a lot of different sizes. This one is a square. I have one that's a diamond, basically a square turned on its side so you can orient it in a different direction. Um, I tend to like like the geometric shapes more than, say, a heart something really literal, but you can choose what you will. I'm going to use this square. 
So one of the tricks is you just want to be consistent in your placements. So I'm going to push it all the way to the edge and punch and then line it right up against my little square hole and punch again. And I'll do this all the way down. Now I've got a mildly interesting piece. I'm going to go and do the same thing along the other edge. And it's not 100% precise, but it ends up looking kind of like a machine did it, almost. So, like I said, one of the tricks is just being consistent. Um, if you repeat something enough, it looks like it was meant to be that way. Alright, so I got a lot of squares there. Um, I like this diamond shape. It's got some stuff jammed up in it. Alright, so let's say I want to put the diamond shape in here. I just have to make sure that I do it consistently in a similar location every time. And what I'm doing in this case is I'm lining it up uh, with these two squares. I think if I do it here, it's going to overlap too much and cut into that one. So I'm going to scooch over one more. And I'll just do that all the way down. All right, so I have a pretty interesting pattern. Um, my diamonds are a little offset, but that's okay. It's just, it's consistent, so it looks like it was intended to be that way. And I'll show you a couple others that I've done. This is just um, rectangles in two different sizes that I repeated throughout the, the paper. This one uses the diamonds, the rectangle, and a circle. And then this one... I ended up cutting off the edges to make a really um, dense pattern. And I will show you how I print those once I clean up my mess. All right, we're gonna go ahead and print. I've got Mars Black by Liquitex on the plate, and I'm just gonna roll out a nice thin layer. It should look like satin on the plate, no orange peel texture. If you have that, it's too much. And I'm gonna lay down my hole punch stencil and then lay a second sheet of the book paper over the top to pick up those black dots through the openings and then a pickup sheet to kind of clean up the edges and help me be able to uh, smooth my paper down. And then I'll roll off my brayer to clean it. I'm using a palette knife to help me pick up the paper without disturbing what's there. And then I'm gonna clean my brayer and roll a color over the top of this stencil. I'm using Permanent Rose by um, Windsor & Newton. It's their Galleria brand, which is their student grade brand, but I find it's a, a good quality and I like a lot of the colors in there in that brand. And then I'm going to clean my brayer off and I'm kind of letting that paint dry a bit. Um, and I'm going to use, yeah, I'm checking there to make sure it's dry. I'm using Pyrrole Orange. Uh, in the golden open acrylics 
and I'm rolling it on the second uh, jelly plate just so I get a good coating before my brayer ever touches the plate. Um, if you use a dry brayer that isn't fully coated on your plate and you have something on there that you're trying to preserve, sometimes it'll pick it up and um, just kind of ruin your image and pick up your paint and so I prefer to have that second jelly plate as my rollout surface and I think my prints have started turning out better because of that and then we're gonna do the second one same procedure pick the cat hair off and place your little stencil down Place that second sheet over the top, do your pickup sheet, and yeah, that looks good. I'll clean up the edges, and I used um, Primary Cyan by Golden. For some reason, it uh, dried really quickly, and Almost none of it stuck to the plate, which was very unfortunate. Um, it was just their heavy body brand, not the, the open acrylics. So I ended up with colored paper, but um, not a lot left on the plate, which was what I had hoped for. So we'll try it again with a different type of paint, maybe. And then this is cobalt teal. It's a very expensive paint, but I think highly worth it. It's just a beautiful color. One of my favorites. I had um, steered away from the really expensive pigments for a long time um, because hey they're expensive but <laughs> turns out they're worth it because look at that color. I just love that blue. It's, um, it's like the sky and just gorgeous. All right last print we're gonna do this really dense um, little rectangular piece. Oh, my kitty's wanting to contribute here. I'm going to clean up my brayer. And looks like a good print. This is um, primary, uh, I'm sorry, quinacridone magenta in the golden open acrylics. And I'm going to roll that over the top to get some color in the holes and around the outside. I'll peel up my sheet. And I did get some color on there. And then I'm going to use cobalt teal again. And this, uh, in combination with magenta, makes a gorgeous purple. And just really, really lovely. lovely. They work well together. I'm going to clean up the brayer. Print what's left on that rollout uh, jelly plate. And look at that. Yeah, I love that color. Just gorgeous purple. All right, let's take a look at what we got. So we've got some nice compatible pieces, um, some black and white. We got some pieces that have color on both sides so I can decide uh, how to use them. Thanks so much for watching.